Hi there. Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. We hope you and your family had a wonderful Halloween week. Today's show is all about the people who came together to make the day one to remember, whether it was helping plant the perfect pumpkin or finding a cause for all that leftover candy. Kids, adults, and seniors are coming together for Colorado, and I am excited to share these stories with you. For many kids, finding the perfect costume takes some time. But imagine how tricky it must be if you're in a wheelchair. Well, that's where the group Magic Wheelchair comes in. Joel Hillen shows us how the nonprofit is making kids' Halloween dreams come true. Monica Richardson faces the same challenge every Halloween. It's very hard finding a good costume for a kid in a wheelchair. But this year was different. We have liftoff. Six-year-old Arik got his very own custom-made costume. I think he'll get lots of candy and lots, lots of high fives. We'll introduce you to the volunteers who made this surprise possible. I'm going to sleep well tonight, that's for sure. That's next on Together. Looking forward to that one. Well, if you have any leftover Halloween candy, a fourth grader in the high country knows exactly what to do with it. As Matt Kroschel explains, she is turning the sweets into treats for troops. For Libby Stranton, candy isn't just for kids. It's also the perfect way to give back to those who serve our country. The first year you did it. Mm -hmm. And we got 80 pounds. Libby plans to use your candy donations to put smiles on soldiers' faces. It makes you feel really good inside. Her ambitious goal for this year's candy drive, that's later on Together. Well, if you're like me, you spend a lot of time looking for that perfect pumpkin. And you might be a little surprised to learn it's not just farmers growing the gourds for all of us. As Karen Morfitt shows us, inmates are tending the crops, too. In Golden, there's a pumpkin patch hidden in plain sight. A lot of watering, a lot of weed picking. It doesn't sit on a farm. Instead, it sits outside the Jefferson County Jail. Last year, I ended up here because I got a DUI. This program isn't just helping the inmates learn a new skill, how it's also helping kids in the community. And just the smile on their face that, you know, just a pumpkin could, could bring. And it was, it was pretty amazing, to say the least. That's coming up on Together. We're going to have more on those stories in just a moment. But first, I want to introduce you to a couple who have been working to keep trick-or-treaters safe for 25 years. Following a wave of violence in the Park Hill neighborhood, Ed and Susan Donovan created a ghost post outside of their home. As Kelly Worthman and photojournalist Steve Youngerman explain, it's become a place that offers kids so much more than candy. I'm turning into a witch. Halloween is a real treat for Ed and Susan Donovan. Okay. On the corner outside their Park Hill home, the couple sets up candy and warm apple cider just like they have for the last 25 years. And it's so much fun because these kids just keep coming back. I've been coming here with like my friends since like third grade. This is their ghost post. It's a neighborhood tradition they helped start to keep kids safe while trick-or-treating. I mean, it's too bad that it took uh, a tragedy to get something like this started. It began in 1993 after the summer of violence and a young man killed on Halloween. Fear nearly canceled trick-or-treating in Park Hill until neighbors like Ed and Susan came together creating ghost posts to keep watch. We walked with flashlights and shined the lights in the bushes and made sure there weren't people back there because there was a real concern for safety. As years passed and those concerns went away, Ed and Susan's Halloween tradition stayed the same. Last year, a young lady showed up with a little girl and she said, you know, my parents used to bring me to your house for trick-or-treating and hot apple cider, and now I'm a parent, and so I'm bringing my daughter. To show how much this community loves Ed and Susan, <laughs> this Halloween, neighbors came to them to say thanks. Ed and Susan. Wonderful neighbors and all the wonderful Halloween memories. Couldn't do it without great neighbors and friends. Oh, I just love them. Well, this week at Rocky Mountain Hospital for Children, Colorado's egg producers hosted a fun Halloween-themed breakfast. Volunteers cooked up some really scrumptious yummies while the kids got to spend some quality time with their families. And they also got to meet Eckbert right there, the mascot. Pretty cool. Days like this one give families a chance to step away from the hospital room for change. To have these wonderful people come in and provide this, you know, and make us all feel like we're family and the kids are keeping their minds off of it, keep the parents' mind off of it for a little bit and enjoy each other's company and come together as one. 
Really nice. Colorado egg producers do something like this about twice a year. Well, there is a group of volunteers working to make Halloween dreams come true for children with special needs. They came together to make a custom costume for a six-year-old boy in a wheelchair. As Joel Hillen and photojournalist Robert Sanchez show us, the outfit was out of this world. When you think about what some of these kids have to go through, uh, what Magic Wheelchair is doing for them is, is really awesome. His team's assignment this year, an X-Wing Starfighter for six-year-old Arik Forrester. Arik loves space. His favorite place to go is the museum um, and the planetarium at the Denver Museum. So we decided a rocket ship was perfect for him. So they went to work. We were up till, well, right now, from last night until, until this moment building there. Making sure the custom costume was ready for the big reveal. Three, two, one, we have liftoff. That's our rocket ship. <laughs> it's just very exciting to get to see him smile and excited and, and see something new and fun for him to play with. Ark suffers from a rare chromosomal disorder that causes him to have difficulties with speech, communication, and movement. He also suffers from frequent daily seizures. Having something custom made for him in his wheelchair, um, it just makes it so much more fun for the whole family. It took all the stress away for us, from us. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you to everyone who helped us and everyone who participated and had a part in this. Just thank you so much. Oh, such grateful parents, right? Absolutely. Joel Hillen joins us now. We love this story so much. We wanted to talk a little bit more about it. You were there, got to talk to this family. So um, what was it like for you to watch this? Uh, it was beautiful. It's, it was actually a moment that we almost didn't capture. We were there for another reason, for the Wings Over the Rockies uh, new exhibit there. Oh, wow. And I, and I said, what's going on over there? And they said, oh, this kid's getting a custom costume. And I said, Robert, let's go. Let's tell this story. So I, I felt very fortunate to be there in that moment. It was just very touching, and the family is so supportive and loving, and those volunteers were exhausted. They had been up all night the night before. Yeah, let's talk more about them, about the organization. Tell us a little bit more about the Magic Wheelchair. So anyone can volunteer for Magic Wheelchair, mm -hmm. and it's a fairly new organization in Denver, but it's nationwide. It's been providing these Halloween costumes mm -hmm. for kids in needs for a while now. And so uh, two of the people that worked on this were IT people, others were engineers, and they all just sort of come together and make these costumes for these kids really special. So uh, you said anyone can volunteer. Do you have to have artistic skills, or can it just be like a normal Joe like me? <gasps> well, you need a normal <laughs> Joe like me, and then to combine them with somebody with artistic skills. So, you know, that's the thing. We have strengths in certain areas. Other right. people have other strengths, and you come together and make one heck of a costume. Yeah, really, really special. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I'm so glad that you just walked right over onto that. That's awesome. Uh, incredible. <laughs> Serendipity. Yeah, thanks, Joel. Well, homeowner Littleton is using his haunted house to raise awareness for a great organization. Every year, Jeff Rohr transforms his place into the haunted Cotton Creek Manor. Well, this year, he is giving some special attention to the nonprofit Always Choose Adventure. The group helps with those with disabilities and a love for the outdoors. Scott Garcia has autism and says this group changed his life. Here I am today climbing the 14ers in Colorado. I've done 45 so far and have 13 left. I think you can do a lot of support by just getting involved. And if you missed the haunted house this year, don't worry about it. It's going to be back again next year, so you can check it out. Well, do your kids have way too much Halloween candy? One girl in Vail wants you to give it to her, but she's not keeping it for herself. Instead, she's giving it to our men and women serving overseas. As Matt Kroschel and photojournalist John Mason explain, she is turning the sweets into treats for troops. Most of us don't think twice when we gobble down a snack-sized candy bar. I don't like candy at all. Her fourth grader, Libby Stranton, though, <laughs> those sweet treats will hopefully add up to a ton of joy for our service members deployed around the world. I feel like when you're younger and you get and, you, and you're helpful and you do good things, it makes you feel really good inside. This marks the third year Libby has been collecting the extra Halloween candy for Soldiers Angels Treats for Troops. The first year you did it. Mm -hmm. And we got 80 pounds. And the second year? 600. This is the third year. Mm -hmm. What's your goal? 1,000. We think we're going to get it. Those donations land with troops far away from their families, making sure they get a taste of being back home 
even while on deployment. We have some pictures from them, like holding the candy and like holding up signs with their troop number on them and stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. A sweet way this fourth grader and her community are choosing to give back. Pretty awesome. Libby is collecting candy through next Sunday, November 12th. For a list of drop-off locations, just visit our website, cbsdenver.com. And good luck, Libby. I'm sure you'll reach that thousand. A group of kiddos wanted some advice on their costumes, and they need a perfect place to go. How a group of seniors is helping these preschoolers for Halloween and beyond. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas, and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. We know Halloween brings people together. Just take a look at this group of preschoolers and senior citizens. A dozen students from the Primrose School of Bear Creek visited their friends at Willowbrook Place. The seniors got to help the kids get their costumes ready for Halloween. Well, this is all part of the Adopt a Grandparent program for residents with dementia. It's a program the adults and the kids have really come to love. I'll watch children that are normally kind of shy and quiet suddenly climb into one of the residents laps and just cuddle with them. They like that one-on-one -on -one attention and the, they just get along so well together. It's really special. The kids visit Willowbrook Place at least once a month. Well, Lauren Whitney's with us now, and I love this time of year. The pictures of the little kids are so awesome, aren't they? There have been so many cute little chubby faces and so many cute costumes. I love it so much, too. It's hard to pick mm -hmm. this week for our pictures, but let's get started. This is Alexis. Now, she is a patient at Children's Hospital, and she wanted to be a surgeon for Halloween because Ooh. she has such awesome surgeons that perform for her at the hospital. She said she wants to be a surgeon when she grows up as well, and I think she's going to make a great one. And take a look at this. This is Jadison. He has to have his treatments at the Children's Hospital. So for this year, he wanted to be the balloon boy in that's the awesome. logo. That's <laughs> how much it. he loves going to Children's Hospital. And that's such a cute, creative costume there. I love this. This is from the Garza family. Big announcement. They have a, a bump ahead <laughs> in their construction crew. So uh, congratulations. I love the pregnancy that's ones. That's really creative. I love that too. That, I haven't seen that one. That's cute. I know. That's a great one. And we have to end it with this. This is from the Doig family. They have a little tired T-Rex and mom had to carry home there. Trick-or-treating can be really tough sometimes. And, you know, those you little legs her. have a hard time going. <laughs> <laughs> you got to think about that when you put your kids in a costume, right? I'm sure I'm surprised no one ran off the road looking at that driving exactly. past. Like, what in the world? So cute. Well, we love all of them. Mm -hmm. We always appreciate you sharing. And we'll be sure to share your photos with us as well. We want to see you out enjoying Colorado with your family. So send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado. And we will be sure to share right here on our show. Well, we've seen some amazing pumpkin carvings this week, but when it comes time to get rid of those gourds, cities say don't throw them in the trash, just hold on to them. How you can come together for Colorado's environment and recycle it. On this week's Together for Colorado calendar, Monday, you can weigh in on the future of Boulder's open space. You'll be able to share your ideas during a workshop at the Boulder Jewish Community Center. Thursday, attend the 10th anniversary gala for Be the Gift. The organization helps single moms in Denver. Friday, start your Christmas shopping early at the Mile High Holiday Mart. The Junior League of Denver's event runs through the weekend, and you can find out more about these events by visiting the Together for Colorado section of CBSDenver.com. A lot of families go out to pumpkin patches this time of year, and there's one in Jefferson County that's giving inmates the opportunity to come together for Colorado. They grow the pumpkins themselves, and they donate them to special programs within the community. Karen Morfitt explains how their quest to create the perfect pumpkin is making a difference. It makes my day. Just outside of the Jefferson County Jail, there's a patch of dirt. It doesn't seem like much, but for the inmates looking over it, it's everything. We work Monday through Friday, 5.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And between those hours, I just, I, I don't feel like I'm an inmate. 19-year-old Tyg Polston is here because of an underage DUI and then a probation violation. He's one of just a few who helped turn this into a pumpkin patch. We put a lot of good, uh, good effort into it, and the main motivation was because we knew where it was going. So, like, we do a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, we 
Well, there's a lot of snacks. It's a small but important piece of the mentoring program Joseph Ford is part of at Bell Middle School. They use their pumpkins for a carving contest. Everybody gets to go choose their pumpkin and then they uh, work on it with their mentor. Down the street, a special needs school laid dozens of the pumpkins out on their lawn, letting the students pick the perfect match. Wherever they ended up, even Ford knows the value of where those pumpkins came from. Honestly, like stuff like that, helping the community and stuff. I think it's pretty good to help them get back on track. And while the inmate program teaches Polston a trade he can carry with him when he's out, he's learning even more about life. Seeing the, the joy in their faces, just, you know, that a simple pumpkin can bring, you know, it was, it's pretty amazing to see that. And if you have some leftover pumpkins, don't throw them out. Denver wants to help you recycle them. Most of the one billion pounds of pumpkins produced in the U.S. end up in landfills, and that takes up a lot of space. It releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere as well. Well, if you have a shriveled pumpkin to get rid of, simply bring it to a Denver Recycles Leaf Drop Station. You will find a list of all of those. We've made it easy for you at CBSDenver.com. A four-year-old boy in Weld County has a Halloween costume that is getting plenty of attention. How law enforcement is reacting to this adorable young trooper? Catch the latest episodes of Together as well as your favorite Together for Colorado Stories anytime at CBSDenver.com. One four-year-old's Halloween costume got the attention of Colorado State Patrol, so they came together to help him feel like part of the group a keto farmer dressed up as a trooper for Halloween. When CSP got wind of the little guy, they went the extra mile to make it a Halloween that he would never forget. After checking out the cruisers and passing a uniform inspection, a keto was made a junior trooper. His mom says this was about more than just a Halloween costume. Yeah, I'm proud of him, yeah. And then if he, the more he interacts with the cops, the more he'll have a better relation with them in the future. I Akito's mom, Veronica, works for the State Port of Entry and says she found most of his costume online. Well, whether it's sharing your picture, sending in your story ideas, or giving me your feedback, I love hearing from each and every one of you. Kim sent me this note. She says, I always enjoy watching your show on Sunday mornings. As a journalist myself, I can say I'm a fan of your work. Way to go. Well, thank you, Kim, and all of our viewers for joining us every week. I look forward to hearing from more of you, so send me your feedback, your story ideas, and of course those pictures that we love so much. You can email me directly or post them to social media using the hashtag for Colorado. So thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Together. Don't forget to tune in next week for even more stories of how people are coming together for each other for Colorado. And who knows, we may even share your story ideas, your comments, and post some of your pictures too. Until then, I want you to take you to a special performance from the Colorado Ballet as dancers stepped outside the studio to perform for patients at Children's Hospital Colorado. Photojournalist Tom Myers takes us there. Closed captioning is brought to you by Concord Career College. Start your healthcare career in months, not years. To find out more, visit concord.edu.